Hello and welcome back. This is Cody one more time. It has been a journey ever since I did a video. Oh my, it has been almost half a year. I'm not sure. I will get ramped up again now. Like, I'm back almost. I uh, almost did my PhD now. Um, so, uh, this side is almost finished. I, I promise you almost. <laughs> uh, on the other side, I'm just back from China. I was on the countryside of China. Uh, to training Gong Fu. That's where my name comes from, an engineer, you know. And uh, yeah, really cool, like, uh, also very weird, I don't know, engineer training Gong Fu, but who cares? Do whatever you like, that's what I do. And I'm doing a really nice tutorial video today, and very good that I didn't clear the screen because I just tested my code because I <laughs> ran a video previously last year and it was just failing miserably and I had to record everything it was so annoying and I really love you today I will do something really really nice I will talk or show you how to do really nice matplotlib interactive graph so we want to kind of create a graph if we click on stuff we want to want to like happen more more things I don't know like show up which point we select it or so so the first thing you always do uh, is importing numpy uh, and of course, um, PyPlot for me here, because it's simple, you know, not <laughs> PyPlot is PyPlot, no, we don't want that. We're done, we want more, more, short, brief, whatever. Okay, first we need random numbers, so I think, I think the random dot random sounds pretty random to me. So 100 points with 3D coordinates, of course, here we go, so we almost, we're almost there. Um, then we kind of create a figure, and the figure, of course, must be fill in with uh, some subplot. So uh, we kind of do the subplot thing here, and I'm th missing already one thing, which is the projection 3D. So when we create this, we're doing the projection 3D, but of course, no 3D plots without a weird import, and. Luckily, we have this really, really helpful Visual Studio Code because I'm always confusing this bad import. Like, I and this import import here, I googled it a hundred times in my career for now, and my career is maybe only a few years short. But like, I googled it a billion times. It's just so annoying. This import is so confusing. Okay, or uh, maybe I'm just dumb. Who knows? So we have the data, we have everything we need, so why not just plot it? So we kind of uh, do the thing here, we plot x, y, come on lady, and z. And of course, because we want to show it, uh, here we go, plt.show. Like today is the day, I don't know why, but... Uh, we will we will see like it's fixing a lot of trouble. Oh, I so feared this, but uh, I'm I'm already prepared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared to. Oh yeah, I know my error. Shame on me. Who cares? Um, you want to see results? You get the results. Here we go. So uh, this is it. Um, and uh, what we want to have do is if we click on little thingies like here we want to know which point and the coordinates this is kind of like our goal here so what we need to do is we need to establish a pick function so let's write it here uh, it takes in an event and what we get out is kind of like the indexes of the selected points when there are more points overlapping it's it's a list you know so when there are more points overlapping you of course get more um, more points in this uh, list here. So we do this and of course we need to hook it in. So um, yeah, we, we, we need to go into the figure.canvas, confusing whatever, MPL connect. We kind of like hook in now our function and we do want to hook in the pick event. And what we kind of hook in is our uh, on pick function because obviously on picking something shall happen and this is this pretty neat function. Now I will promise you there is there is a secret to make this work. This will not work and this ridiculous small secret took me 
a billion billion hours to find out when I was doing I, I wrote code in, at the company and I was it was Friday it was a lovely Friday before I started it and the picking didn't work and I was so insane debugging all the time I, it didn't work and then at some point um, you know, it, it got late. It got horribly late. I sat like three hours on this. It was a no annoying because it was the evening. My 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 whole weekend was screwed up. And then in the morning on on Monday morning in five minutes, I found out I forgot the picker equals five, and five is kind of the size of when you pick with the mouse. You know how how big it's selecting when it's not set. There is nothing. It was so annoying. Like seriously, don't forget the picker. It will pick you up on a Friday if you do that. Like me, it so the kind of that's how I remember to not forget the picker. So here we go. Hopefully it will not crash. No, it will not. Like, I have magic fingers. They crash everything they touch. Um, yeah, and of course they cannot select this really, really weird... Who cares? We make it big. No, we don't make it big. So when I select now a point in here, uh, you see we get out the ID, which is 54 and maybe we can get a multi pick yeah here you see th this is not unique so we get like all three which are kind of like here so cool we already got our interactive whatever um, what we can also do is let's say we want to have the data and I will show you the dirty way now and thereafter I show you the beautiful way no one is doing it um, so when we want to know the coordinates we can simply kind of do um, yeah the data and we select um, the indexes which we selected and of course all of the points coordinates so um what do we do is kinda like from this data array it's available in this function because it's in a lower area um, we kinda like print just out the coordinates and when you see when I pick something you see that we get this neat uh, piece and when I select a single one of course you get a single connection and this is kinda like our point Okay, so cool. We, we we can get out the coordinates. Um, the clean way to do this is because you don't want to leak your data in here. That's a dirty way. So what we want to have is we want to have the data to be an argument and to be sure that we are not cheating, we put it below. So it's not declared previously. Um, yeah, what you do is um, you need to replace this one here, the picker. Um, so we kind of do a little bit of a neat trick. We take replace this by a lambda, and what it does is it kind of translate in not only the event but also the data as an argument. So uh, this lambda kind of sneaks in here the data, and it's given here to the picker. And when we run this, hopefully it will not crash. Yeah, you see it's still running so everything is fine um, so this is kinda like how you hook in these picking functions you can do it billions of you could also pop up here a new a new plot or whatever you could kinda play play some weird sounds confusing the people annoying them I don't know I did a lot of funny stuff with my colleagues um, so yeah this this is the way you do it um, and this is one more Python 0 episode um, if you like it, like it. If you don't like it, go away. No one likes haters. Um, yeah, and uh, love you all, guys.